in these streets. And I'm just like you. We getting locked by these caps. And I'm just like you. We fulfill the prophecies. And I'm just like you. You might be light, I might be dark. But I'm just like you. We kill each other over colors. And I'm just like you. I'm in these ghettos in these slums. And I'm just like you. They call you nigga, call me spit. And I'm just like you. You were 1619, I was 1492. We getting shot in these streets. And I'm just like you. Welcome to FCN Quick News of the Day. I'm your host, Officer Daniel, and today's news we have. Black people are committed to building generational wealth. A new survey just confirmed the push to leave a financial legacy. Okay. All right. That's I actually I actually like that idea, but our people, they don't have the full understanding of leaving a financial legacy. That's what we're going to get into today. Let's read some of the article. Black Americans are committed to building intergenerational wealth. Black Americans are highly committed to leaving a legacy to future generations found a recent found in a recent bank survey uh-huh. of 4024 black White and Latino respondents, black people. You don't gotta worry about the white because they already. That's their. That's already their mindset to leave something for their children so they can continuously oppress blacks and Latinos. Go ahead. Black people are also concerned about giving back. According to the data, sixty nine percent of African Americans feel a responsibility to financially help their communities. Mm. That's the highest of all the racial groups in the survey. Okay, come on, read on. Affluent black Americans want to pass on wealth to future generations through tangible assets like real real estate and cash-saving accounts. Right, because our people normally don't think that way. It's, you know, we've been taught that mindset of YOLO, you only got one life. Our people normally don't think about you know what, let me establish something to leave to our kids, leave to our children. But uh, read on. Come on. Go. Uh, Which paragraph is that? You, you, got, you got me all messed up. Scroll up. Okay, yeah, go back down. Read that one. Affluent black Americans feel hopeful, but say discrimination still a challenge. Affluent African Americans with 100,000 and investable assets said they are hopefully about their financial situations. Found the survey. Seventy. Uh, hold on. Let's get to uh. Scroll down. Scroll down. Scroll down. Scroll down. Scroll down. Scroll down. Uh. Hold on. Wait. Uh. Do, 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 do. Yeah. Read that paragraph. Despite the overall optimism, Black Americans still feel pessimism about the structural race racism they have to deal with in their fi- finances that's that being uh stricken or stuck at a minimum wage rate just like you'll know majority of jobs being held by blacks or hispanics are those minimum wage jobs financial uh like uh fast food restaurants servants uh uh customer service representatives that's the ma- the majority of jobs our people we work at right in fact 79 percent of african americans felt that there are institutional forces that mm. keep them from accumulating more wealth according to the u.s bank survey mm. see so they say they feel that there's a uh go back where you where, you, where did you go where you go go back to it they said they feel like there's institutional forces that's keeping them from accumulating wealth. Let's get into that. Go to Haggai chapter 1 and verse 5. We're going to bring the people to answers, right? Watch this. Haggai, I want to read 1 and start from verse 5. The book of Haggai chapter 1 and verse 5. Now, therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Uh-huh. God says consider your ways. Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, you the Israelites, consider your ways. Read. Ye have sown much and bring in little. Ye eat, but ye have not enough. God says you bring in, you, you, you have 
sown so much. You work a lot. You la- your labors are many, but you bring in so little. Read. Ye drink, but ye are not filled uh-huh. with drink. Come on. Ye clothe you, but there is none warm. Read. And he that earneth wages, earneth wages to put it into a bag with holes. God says it seems, it seems you think the way your situation is, it's like you're working so much, but the things that you're accumulating, it's like being put in a bag that's filled with holes. Jump down to verse uh, 9. Verse 9. Ye look for much, and lo, it came to little. Mm-hmm. And when ye brought it home, I did blow, blow up on it. God says, what you brought home, it's like the wind took it. He blowed on it. Your savings is just gone. You worked all week. Your check came in, and it's gone. Watch this. Read. Why, saith the Lord of hosts. Read faster. Because of mine house that is waste, and you run every man unto his own house. God says because you, your, your financial problems you have is because you're worried about yourself. You're not worried about the Lord's house. That's what he's saying. Watch this. Go to Deuteronomy chapter 28. Deuteronomy 28, we're going to read verse 16. Why are we struggling? Have, have, why do we have such a financial struggle? The book of Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 16. Uh-huh. Cursed shalt thou be in the city, and cursed shalt thou be in the field. Come on, God says, cursed shall you be in the city. Worst conditions in every city you live in. And in the field. That's our history. 16, 19, we were in cotton fields. We were picking tobacco. Read. Curse shall be thy basket and thy store. Mm, God says, curse shall be your basket. Just like that bag. That bag with that hole in it. Now you got a basket with a hole in it. And curse shall be thy store. Your businesses. Read. Curse shall be the fruit of thy body. Jump down to verse 20. Verse 20. The Lord shall send upon thee cursing, vexation, and rebuke. Mm-hmm. And all that thou settest thine hand unto for to do until thou be destroyed. And until thou perish quickly uh-huh. because of the wickedness of thy doing. Why, why is God cursing your finances? Because of the wickedness of thy doing. God says because you wicked. You wicked. You leave his house at waste, but yet you tend to your own. Read. Whereby thou hast forsaken me. Mm. That's what you say. You forsake God. You, uh, you, you eliminate God out of the situation where you say you want to. Uh, build financial growth. Watch this. Go to uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 7 and verse 11. We're not saying it's wrong. It's a good idea. It's good. It's good to to, to change your mind frame from solo, uh, what do you call it, uh, YOLO, only think about yourself, to now you think about your, your children to come. That's a good mindset. But watch what you need with that mindset. Ecclesiastes 7. Ecclesiastes 7 verse, verse 11. 11. Wisdom is good with an inheritance. What God said? Wisdom is good with an inheritance. See, if you want to give your children some type of inheritance or uh, what did they say? Financial uh, legacy, right? God says, give that inheritance with wisdom. What wisdom? God's wisdom. The wisdom that you blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, you are the Israelites. And your oppression... Your financial oppression is a direct link to your wickedness, to your sins. That's what God says, for the lack of keeping his commandments. Read it again. Wisdom is good with an inheritance, Uh and by it there is profit to them that see the sun. Come on. For wisdom is a defense, and money is a defense. See, so God says wisdom, that's a defense, and money. Money is a defense. It's a good thing that you want to leave that inheritance to, to, to someone, but give that inheritance with wisdom. Go to Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. Watch this. Because that's what our people think. Our people think that this warfare that they're in, because that's why you're thinking about doing it. You want to build financial wealth, not because you want to see just your people prosper. You want to uh, exceed your oppressor. That's what you're trying to do. You're trying to take over the kingdom with those methods, finances. Our people got many devices that they think they're going to use. They're going, oh, let's uh, take over the state with firearms, with guns, with military. We need a military. We need financial wealth. Why? So we can take back our power. 
God says that's not going to work. Watch this. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again uh -huh. with ships. Come on. By the way whereof I spake unto thee. That's, that's 1619. 1492, we were brought here on cargo slave ships. That's what that is. Read. And thou shalt see it no more again. We're not going to see the place where we came from, our homeland, Jerusalem. Read. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies. And when you get there, God says you're going to be sold as slaves to your enemy. Read. For bond men. Slave men. And bond women. And slave women. Read. And no man shall buy you. And what? And no man shall buy and you. And God says no man shall buy you. No man shall redeem you. No man shall save you. So why are y'all trying to buy yourselves out of slavery? Thinking that finances is going to get you there. Go to Leviticus chapter 25 and verse 47. We've been doing that for a while. You, God says, listen, you may have done that in the past. You may have went and got yourself a job, worked up under your brother, thinking that you, you know, you're going to do this for a while until you get on your feet. And then I'm going to eventually buy myself out of this. I'm going to build that financial wealth to change the estate that I'm in. But God says, this one here, this captivity, this last captivity in Babylon under under uh, the Edomites, your oppressors, so-called white man. God says, you ain't buying yourself out of this one. Read that. Leviticus 25, verse 47. Uh-huh. And if a sojourner or stranger wax rich by thee. Come on. And thy brother that dwelleth by him wax poor. Uh-huh. And sell himself unto the stranger Read. or sojourner by thee. Read. Or to the stock of the stranger's family. Uh -huh. After that he is sold, he may be redeemed again. One of his brethren may redeem him. So one of his brothers may buy him back if he sell himself into slavery. Read. Either his uncle or his uncle's son Come on. may redeem him. Uh -huh. Or any that is nigh of kin unto him of his family may redeem him. Read on. Read faster. Or if he, or if he be able, he may redeem himself. He may do what? He may redeem himself. So that's, that's what we were doing at that time. But go back to Deuteronomy 28. We want to see what he said again. We were, we were buying ourselves back. We sold us when we went, went into slavery because we was wax poor. We needed help. We went servitude, right? We usually would redeem ourselves out of that. Wait for the, the year Jubilee. But God says this captivity, this last one, you ain't buying yourself out of this one. Read. The book of Deuteronomy 28, verse 68. Uh -huh. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. Come on. By the way whereof I spake unto thee, uh -huh. thou shalt see it no more again. Read. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bondmen and bondwomen, and no man shall buy you. And God says, no man shall buy you, not even yourself. So that financial wealth that you're planning on trying to establish if it doesn't have no wisdom with that inheritance, God says it's not getting you out of slavery. Shalom, Israel. This is Bishop Nathaniel. I want you to know that you can view all our Sabbath classes live on IUIC TV. That's right. I said on IUIC TV. Download the app today. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.